Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today we're going to put together a new tool. I've got to build up my shop tools because when I retire I'm not going to have full access to a total machine shop. <clears throat> so we're going to buy some stuff that I use a lot down there <clears throat> and I used to do it here on my drill press but I I get hollered at that by a number of people every time I do. So what we bought was a hydraulic press. This is a tabletop version. It's made by Dake Corporation, which is a company that is right here in Grand Haven, Michigan, about 20 minutes from me, that builds this stuff. And they made all kinds of products, hydraulic presses, uh, V-blocks, arbor presses, and then wouldn't you know it, what did they do? They sold their company to China. I mean, they made some top quality stuff, and now it's probably a piece of junk. But hey, you never know. <laughs> we'll see what this thing looks like. I don't know how they got it all packed in this little bitty box because uh, well, I'm, most of you know what the big uprights are and there's a smaller upright and here's a little tabletop version but they got that all stuffed in this little box I just can't believe it so let's see what it looks like I'm gonna unload it out of this box and I'm gonna put it together over there on that bench because <laughs> This thing weighs 137 pounds. It's supposed to be a tabletop. What kind of table is going to hold that? So I got this from Granger. I have 30 days to decide if I want to keep it or not. And I have to say the helpful people at Granger did not help me get this in my truck. I was a little upset about that. But hey, you know, what can you do? Poor old guy didn't want to work. He's just putting his time. <laughs> so I have to bring this thing back. Um, it's a good thing I'm filming this so I can f figure out how to get this thing back in this box. So let's see what it looks like coming out of the box. See how many busted pieces we have. Wow, kindling. That's some good Chinese plywood there, boy, let me tell you. Might as well keep all this stuff in one pile on the floor so I know where it came from. Oh. Good night. Most of these things come in two boxes. To pop these straps off here. Well, at least it's packed halfway decent. So the paint's not all chipped up on it. Well, look at that. They, they proudly have their name displayed on the top front of the press. It's too bad it's not still made in the USA. Oh, well, what can you do? At least most of the pieces... <clears throat> Most of these presses, I'm sure that some of you guys are familiar with them, the uprights, not so much the top, but the uprights with the holes, they take a piece of flat steel, they shear it to size, they punch all the holes in them, and then they bend the steel into a channel shape. This is actual piece of channel. 
So maybe everything will be a little more square when I get this thing out of here. Oh boy, lots of nuts and bolts. Here's the pump. I guess I'll start carrying some of this over here. We'll try it, but I got my doubts that this thing is going to be much good. More cardboard. Bottom plate. Top plate. This is the bottom plate. You ought to be able to tell the difference in them. This one's threaded. This has a very nice feature to it. I will say it's not packed pretty good. Coming all the way from China. And this must be the table. My gauge, this one has a gauge on it. Wow, and it's not broken. Good night. Now, if you ever find one of these used for sale, I'll tell you how you can tell the difference between a Chinese one and one made in America. And here's my feet. When you put these things together, the ones from Dake came in a lot bigger box because the frame they did do other directions. The outer frame of the press was all welded together. You did not bolt it together. That will be the main difference you will see when you buy one of these that's made in the United States. If you can find an old used dake, I would have bought that instead of this thing. But I looked online and I couldn't find one. I, I couldn't find a press period made in this country. I did find one company that makes presses and most of them are way up industrial like 300 ton presses they use for stamping out like car parts. They do make all the way down to a five ton press, but they want $37,500 for it. And I said, well, I don't think I want to spend that much on a press. So let me pause you and we're going to run over there and start putting this thing together. <laughs> okay, I hope you're not going to time me or anything. <laughs> we're going to put this thing together. Now I did kind of like the part where um, it was packaged. I read one article that a guy put, bought one of these and when it showed up, all these parts were laying loose in a cardboard box. And that's the way they shipped it. And 
know how much you can actually see what we're doing here, but we're going to put this frame together. Now one thing that really gets me is we're stuck buying all this Chinese crap. Why don't these manufacturers get together and say, look, if you're building this stuff to ship over here to America, start using standard nuts and bolts instead of this metric crap. at and I read the uh, reviews guy bought one of these Chinese presses it was a bigger upright one I don't know what brand it was but it didn't have any hardware no nuts and bolts He said when he ordered it, he had to pay shipping to get them. sure which way these bolts are supposed to go in. If it runs on the front, I'm going to put through this way so I don't have to look at the, all the hardware sticking out. Couple of feet and a spreader bar. I don't know if I want that in the front or in the back. I think I'm gonna put it in the back. I got it drilled both ways. Now this thing has a rather unique feature to it. Uh, when I get to that point, I'll show you. That's, I guess, kind of why I liked this style. Just gonna snug all this stuff up right now. Just kind of finger tight. I think I'm gonna have to put them through. The other way, you got them holes so close together you can't get the bolts in 
the same direction. They hit each other. A little planning would have been nice on that one. You kind of wonder when they build this stuff over there, do they actually assemble one of them so they can tell if it works? Kind of always wondered that. Hopefully, uh, a video coming up is going to be repairing my trailer. I uh, bought new lights for it because a couple of them were broke. And you know, one thing leads to another. I made a frame that goes on the front tongue with a winch on it. A hand winch to get the uh, machines on there that's not running. And after I got that made, they powder coated it black and I put it on the trailer. I got thinking, man, this trailer's looking really bad. So there's a company over here by us that we use at the shop a lot. And uh, they do powder coating. So I'm going to have them powder coat my trailer. I've got it all stripped down, got all the wood off it. All the old wires off, um, scraped off most of the rust and dirt that was built up inside of it. You know, as heavy as this thing is, I don't know if I want to put that cylinder in there right now. On the boat, there it is. By golly, I got them all. This might be the fun part. on. This is definitely a two-person job. Now I can get the washer and the lock nut on. On this side, take this one back off and get the washer and the lock nut on this one the lock washer I should say yeah we probably ought to snug them up just a tad and I don't have a wrench right here now I use one of my squares I made for welding. 
This is a three quarter inch thick by inch and a half wide square. I've got a video on how I made them at work. That's the only good part about all this stuff. Having metric hardware is all my other tools are at my father-in-law's and I'm working on the trailer over there. Alright, we'll tighten some of these up best we can for now. I'm sure I'm going to have to go over this and tweak it all in. According to the directions, after you get this thing all put together, you're supposed to be able to fit the table in here. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Okay, now that I got that on, well that's a little wiggly. I guess we better tighten this up. If I go the right direction, huh? sticker on here it says warning this must be for these California people that I don't know it says cancer and reproduction harm and that's all it says so I don't know maybe they don't want you getting your finger stuck in there or something Now we can screw this in place. Now, the thing I really like about this, if you've got a larger piece that just fits in here, and what you want to press is off-center, most presses 
the jack is in the center and you can't move them. This one, the cylinder, you can slide from side to side to press something that's off center on your part. That's going to be nice. The pump hangs over here on the side of it. And there's no holes to, <laughs> to, <coughs> to bolt it on with. There's a hole there. I guess that bugger just hangs on there. Well, that's going to be kind of unhandy. I guess we'll have to drill some holes and bolt that solid because this is just going to swing around. Now let's see if we can get the table in like they said we could. I guess we'll have to see how it works. Oh, they got little roll pins in there. Little eighth inch. How long do you think them are going to last? Now, let's see if we can get this thing in. Wow! A little wiggly. Don't know what the problem is with that. We're going to have to check to make sure these holes are drilled straight through and not on an angle. <laughs> Gotta love that. Well, I'm going to finish putting this thing together and we'll see how it works. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes after I get the I gotta get the hose hooked up to the cylinder and get the gauge on and all that good stuff. So I'll be back. Okay, now I gotta put the lock nut on the bottom of the cylinder so it doesn't come loose. And of course, it's a spanner nut. That means you have to have a spanner wrench to tighten it up. Or I suppose you can use a hammer and a punch. <laughs> if I can get it in here, I think I'm going to have to take one of these off. And I already found out that... With these bolts in here that hold this thing together, tried locking these down and getting them tight. They should have been shoulder bolts. Because if you tighten these up, you can't slide your head. So I'll get this measured up tomorrow <clears throat> and I'll get me some bar stock and make me some spacers so I can bolt this solid and still be able to move it. If you just got this thing on here loose, you're never going to know if you dropped one of the nuts or both the nuts, and then this thing's going to come crashing down on you. <clears throat> Always something. 
Yeah, I lost my little washer, but I'm gonna have to take it all apart tomorrow when I put them shoulder bolts on. So we won't worry about it. Now you do get some nice plates to uh, different size holes, V's. Put your parts on to press, press stuff through. Here's the handle for this pump and it's way too long. I'm never going to need 10 tons of pressure to do what I'm doing, what I got this for. So I think, oh, I guess I better tighten the handle up here. Now they do have a video online talking about this and how to put it together. And they say <clears throat> they give you a complete rebuild kit for the pump and the cylinder. Just in case you need it, but chances are you never will. But it's nice to have if, if they have that much faith in this equipment, <clears throat> they wouldn't give you a kit to fix it. See how the gauge works. That's supposed to tell you how much pressure you're getting. I guess you're supposed to have this thing on the bench. And then you can hang that up when you're not using it, but <clears throat> again for the type of things I'm going to be doing. It's just going to be pressing in washers, not washers, uh, bearings, and uh, I think that's probably more than I'm ever going to need. Well, there's 200. There's four tons. Five tons. I don't think I'll ever need that much. And it does retract itself. So I guess all in all, it's not bad. I sure wish it was still made in Grand Haven. <clears throat> the factory is still there. It is a huge building. My son-in-law lives in, or lives, works in Grand Haven. His uh, shop is there. And uh, he told me they were supposed to come in this summer, this past summer, and tear down that building because the property is worth much more if that old building's not sitting on it. So I'm not sure, you know, what's going to happen to it. Now, talking about this nut, that needs a spanner wrench to lock this thing on. I got a lot of comments on a video I did and I talked about snap rings. We all know what them are. And lock rings. Basically, these are both made to go on the outside of an item to keep it in. There's inside ones that are in the spindles on the snappers these outside ones hold the spindle into the bottom of the mower deck. There's a couple of these on the top. <clears throat> and I mentioned these the last time in that video. These are the lock ring players. They're knurled on the edge. And that is so they'll grip to open this up. To get it in or out of, I guess get it off of something. Or you can grip them this way. But what I didn't mention is I bought these at my True Value, no, not True. I bought this at the Fruitport Automotive, which is a Napa store. And if you look real close, right there, let me get the light right up there, you can see it. Made in the USA. Lifetime warranty. 
I don't know how in the world you'd ever break them, but hey, you know, you never know what you use something for. <laughs> if it's in reach and you need something quick. So these I did get at my Napa store. They were like 20 bucks or something. Lifetime warranty. You're not going to run into lock rings very often. Uh, I run into them at the shop in some of the machines. Snap rings, you're going to run into them a lot. So you're going to need a decent pair of snap ring pliers. <coughs> but I guess all in all, this isn't too bad. I do think the problem is this thing is not, I put it on my table saw and it rocks a little, but it doesn't rock this much. I think it's a combination of this is out of square a little and these holes must be. We'll see what we can do about fixing some of them up. Not bad. What I'm going to be using it for, it should be fine. This is Andy's, part of Andy's machine. I got I to gotta hopefully get this together this weekend. <coughs> I already pressed the bearing in. I did it at work. And now I don't have to go to work to do this stuff. That's going to help me out a lot. Um, and again, uh, I'm working on my trailer. I have to put all new decking on. I have to put all new wires on. Uh, it's going to be powder coated next week. And I may have a surprise on that. I'm not really sure. We'll see how that works out. But by the way it looks, I think this is going to work out pretty nice. I just wish it wasn't made in China. Now, and it's all put together. I got to get it in the lean to on a bench I got out there. I guess I'm going to have to learn how that hangs on there. For the most part, what I'm going to be doing, I think I'm going to make a shorter handle. Probably about six eight inches long should give me plenty of leverage to push these bearings in i mean hey i've done it on my drill press for years <laughs> i can't tell you how many people have wrote me and said that's a drill press not a hydraulic press well it just depends what you're doing with it at the time sometimes i drill holes sometimes i press bearings but I won't have to do that anymore. So I'll make a lot of people happy. <laughs> so until next time, work safe, have fun, and I'll talk to you soon. So long.